Hey folks, today we're coming to you live from the Blue Moon, and well, today we are working on Grandma. What's wrong with Grandma, you might ask? Well, Grandma has got a loose shifter. If you own a Ford from the late 90s on up, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Trying to find that reverse gear and back into drive, not so fun sometimes. I've got the cure, so stay tuned. So if you guys don't know who Grandma is, and this is your first time tuning into my channel, this is Grandma, my 2004 Mercury Grand Marquis. It is an LS edition. And if you like what you see here on today's video, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button because we've got all kinds of content on these Panther platforms, square body trucks, Chrysler Cordoba, and even Yugos. So what we're talking about here today, guys, is the shift indicator uh, does not properly line up with the shifter. And this is just in the park. If I zoom out a little bit, you'll see that I can move that shifter quite a bit. And uh, that's moving around. And even when I go to put the key in the ignition to pull it down into reverse, once it locks in, it's fine. But the shifter still has quite a bit of play once it's in there and back again in drive. So when you're trying to get back and forth between reverse and drive, even though the indicator says reverse, sometimes you gotta kind of friggle with it to get it to go back in. So what we're gonna do in this episode is we're gonna show you how to fix that. It's not as hard as you might think. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tilt the steering column all the way up, and that just gives you a little bit more room to get, it, get in here. Uh, then we're gonna take this little cover off that covers up the steering column from underneath. And there's three Christmas tree clips across the bottom, and you can just pry those out with a Christmas tree tool. And then you've got your interior dome light that just does a quarter turn and pulls out. So get that out of the way. So these wires that are hanging here are just wires for the amplifier. Those were tucked up out of the way of that shield. So uh, let's get in here and we'll show you uh, where we're gonna start. The first thing we're gonna check to make sure is tight is this T30 bolt right here. Uh, there's another one over and behind it, which is kind of in behind where this uh, steering column is. You can't see it. Uh, we're gonna try and tighten that up and tighten the other one up because that is connected to your shifter. If I go up, and I wiggle the shifter, you'll see uh, that it is loose. So we're gonna start with those two, and then we're gonna check another spot. All right, so both of those, I didn't get a whole lot of turn on them, so I'm guessing that that is not the problem, but on the Ford F-150s, those two bolts can back out and give you some trouble as well. So if I go and I shake that shifter right now, it's still moving uh, the same amount that it did before. So now what we're gonna do is gonna go up top, and check up there. So now with a Phillips screwdriver, we've got three screws, one, two, and three. Uh, that will allow you to disconnect this bottom portion of the steering column cover from the top portion of the steering column cover. And where we actually wanna get is to the top. So when you get this, uh, these three screws out, just let that hang, and then you're gonna have to pop off this uh, connector here that connects to the ignition. Then that's just with a flat screwdriver. You just give it a little twist, it pops off and then we can remove this top portion of the steering column cover. So let's get those screws out. So once you get those three screws out of the bottom of that, this bottom panel just pops off. Once you get the seven millimeter uh, little retainer or faster that holds on your park brake. So once you get that out, everything just is gonna slide off. So you just give it a little bit of a tug and uh, it will just kind of fall out. And then you gotta get this metal panel off. And I believe those are held in there with four 10 millimeters. So let's go ahead and get those out. So now that we've got this far and that panel is out of there, you can now reach or access this small little Phillips screw, uh, screw in here. So you're gonna have to take that out before the bottom falls off. So let's get that one out. So now that we got the top cover off, you'll see the same T30. There's two of them, one on either side of the shifter. And you see that that whole shifter is moving. So what we need to determine is are those loose or is that little isolator or insulator right there worn out to the point where it's causing it to be sloppy. Let's get the uh, ratchet on there with our T30 and see if those are gonna be uh, tight or not. Well, as you can see, I'm getting some turning on that one. And same thing with that one, is we are getting some turns on it. And it's not wanting to tighten up. So that tells me that there's something else wrong here. So just as I suspected, 
I think someone's been here before. So this hole here looks good and clean, but if we zoom into this one over here, you'll see that the threads are pretty galled up on that aluminum. Someone has tried to over tighten that at one time. Who knows, maybe it was me. So what we gotta do now is we gotta figure out a way that we can get this cover back on and get a bolt so that it will tighten up inside that aluminum. And I'm thinking some thread lockers, what it's gonna take. So upon further inspection, I did double check on one of the bolts that we took out and this is the one with the galled threads. And as you can see, it's got some aluminum pulled out with it. Um, but that's where they were, was at the very bottom. So I'm not sure if it just pulled them out from the top or what. But anyway, uh, I think the plan is here is that we're gonna get uh, this bolt tightened up with a little bit of thread locker on it. Uh, and then we're gonna do the same thing over on the other side and try and get that done. But I think for this one over here, we're gonna have to try a different method. I'll show you what that method is. Before I show you the method we're gonna to use to fix that, uh, those gold threads, I consulted with my co-host of the Get Out and Drive podcast, John Custom Carner Meyer. If you're not following him on Instagram, go ahead and follow him. Um, I asked him, I said, do you think we should be using red Loctite or JB Weld? And he says, well, red Loctite is generally for holding threads together. He says he doesn't see much thread in that second hole. So we'll use JB Weld and we'll mix that up and put that in there a little bit of a slurry and make sure the threads get coated as we screw that down and uh, hopefully we can get enough dog on it that it will hold and then when that epoxy sets up uh, we just won't drive the car for a little bit we'll just kind of let that harden up over the next 24 hours um, but yeah i consulted an expert and that's what the experts say so if you don't like that you can blame john so sorry john I'm throwing you under the bus here uh <laughs> Anyway, we've got some uh, JB Quick here. We're going to mix that up and get those uh, poured into that hole so that we can get this thing put back together. And if you're not following John and I over on the Get Out and Drive podcast, well, you probably should be. I will leave a link down in the description box below. If you want something to listen to, more car-related content, uh, there's a little bit of fun, a little bit of humor, and a lot of interesting people that we're interviewing uh, over these next few weeks and that we've already interviewed since I joined the Get Out and Drive podcast. So go on over there wherever you find your favorite podcast and make sure you're downloading Get Out and Drive podcast. All right, so I'm going to try and do this quickly. So we're going to get down in there, swoop that all around. Hopefully that's enough. I'll put some on the threads of the bolt too. So I'm gonna tighten these down and we'll call this part of the fix done. So the last thing we gotta do is to check on the other two T30s that are way down inside the column. I don't know if I can get down here far enough, but way down at the tip of my finger, there's another one of these little horseshoe type fasteners that goes over top of the column. There's one there and there's one over here. There is two seven millimeter bolts here and there's one here and I'm thinking if I drop this, I should be able to get those what looks like maybe a 12 or 13 millimeter and drop the steering column and then I should be able to get my ratchet in there and see if we can tighten things up. Let's get those bolts out of there, that one and that one and see uh, what we can do. All right, so there are the other two that we need to get in there and uh, try and see if we can get them tight. Problem is, is I need a quarter inch drive ratchet and I can't find mine. So I gotta run over to the shop and grab one and we'll come back and get those tight. Okay, so we did manage to get some snugness on those. Um, the unfortunate thing is, is we've come this far and everything is still loose on this column. So what that tells me is, is that if you guys are in this position now and you've tightened up all those six bolts and everything is still loose, well, 
you probably need a new shifter column. But only one time in the 13 years that I've been selling cars and the, I don't know how many years I've been working on them, uh, have I ever had to replace a steering or a shifter column, and that was on a Ford Ranger. It's a very similar setup. A lot of these Fords are using those aluminum shafts and those hold downs, and well, over time, they do just happen to get loose. So what we're gonna do here with Grandma is, well, absolutely nothing. Uh, we've gone this far to the point where we wanna make sure that the uh, shifter has been tightened up, and well, what we did did not do the trick, but that is how you do it 99% of the time. Uh, when you have a loose shifter. So uh, we're not gonna be replacing the shifter shaft on grandma, we're just gonna put things back together. So I'm gonna do that and before we get done and close out this video, I will show you how to adjust that shift indicator so that you can make sure your gears line up exactly where they're supposed to be when you pull it into gear. Okay, so we've got the dash all put back together mostly and uh, we're getting ready to button up the steering column cover. Before we do that, I wanna show you where the adjustment is to align your pointer indicator on the Prindle selector, which is your park, reverse, neutral. And it allows you to make some fine adjustments to get that needle to go a little bit one way or a little bit to the other. So I'm gonna show you where that is. Okay, so right on the right-hand side of the shifter and right about where the tip of my finger is, there's a threaded little black rod that goes up. And right below that, there's a kind of a notched little keyway wheel. And you'll be able to get your finger in there and spin that one way or the other, raising and lowering that threaded rod, and that will adjust the park neutral uh, selector. Uh, and that will adjust your needle on the park reverse neutral drive switch. So I'm gonna reach in there and turn that, and I'll show you how much adjustment there is on your selector. If I pull it towards me, it moves the needle to the right. And if I push it away from me, it moves it to the left. So we're gonna go with right about there, and then we're gonna put the key in the ignition and we're gonna try each gear to make sure that it's lined up. So there's park, there's reverse. Reverse is a little bit off. Neutral is a little bit off, and drive is a little bit off. So. We're going to reach in there. We're going to pull that little adjuster wheel towards us and line it up until we feel comfortable with where it should be. So I think that's about where it should be. Let's try the other ones. Neutral. Reverse. And park is off. So I don't think you're going to get it perfect. But drive is right where it's supposed to be. We've still got some slop. There's neutral, I think that's reverse, and there's park. So let's uh, meet in the middle. Go back a little bit, and try again. Reverse, neutral, drive. I can live with that. So now it's time to finish putting this together, close out this video. Well, that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that you learned something today on these Ford uh, shifter mechanisms and how much of a pain in the butt they can be. So if you want some more great car content, make sure you head over here to the Car Guy and Six Fan Show. This is our latest episode. Also, if you go down here, you can watch Get Out and Drive Podcast YouTube channel because, well, they've got a YouTube channel and uh, you can go over there and subscribe to that as well. Guys, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you. God bless. Let's do it again real soon.